just to begin, we uh, respectfully acknowledge the people of the lands that we're on. They'll be different lands, of course, depending on where we're living. I'm on Darug land here in Bankstown. Uh, so uh, the, we respect the elders, past, present and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded and that we support the, the Uluru Statement of the Heart and the voice to Parliament for our Aboriginal people. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have, we'll be involved in a process which is called New Narratives for Peace. And this is a workshop uh, for that particular purpose. So if there's anyone here who is, is not here for that purpose, we will understand if you leave us, but uh, presumably we're, we're all here for that purpose. So the, the way in which we'll proceed today is there'll be a process through which we have a, a group sharing. And from that process, we'll identify certain narratives or stories uh, that, that we feel have been influential for us and the personal impact for us, particularly of those narratives or stories. We'll have a break then and talk then after the break, we'll talk about the future from what we've observed from the narratives and also what personal responsibility or action we might proceed from us, from those, those narratives that we've considered. The, our, our, key, our key host and facilitator for the day will be Shoshana Fair. Shoshana has had a background with the Conflict Resolution Network for many years, and uh, uh, I've known Shoshana for a fair few of those years. She's also facilitator for Creators of Peace and for the, international, uh, for the Initiatives of Change Australia uh, group as well. So. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, Shoshana, and thank you for hosting the session. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, a very vibrant time of sharing and uh, and outcomes. I, I, I would I would see it would seem for me. Yeah. So over to you, Shoshana. Thank you very much, Lindsay, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, it's my role right now to introduce you to Jean Brown. And it's a great pleasure for me to do that. Um, I've known Jean for 12 years now. When I first met her, when I first came across Initiatives of Change and Creators of Peace, Peace. and she's been a huge inspiration and source of wisdom to me over the many years that we've worked together. And uh, she's been in this field and de dedicating her life to this work for a long time. I think she'll be annoyed if I tell you how long. It's been a very long time. and. Um, been a source of inspiration to many people around the world. She's lived in different countries and worked in different countries. She's originally from Britain and now lives in South Australia with her husband, who's Australian. And um, Jean created the Creators of Peace Peace Circle program that we've been running at Creators of Peace for over 20, over 20 years now, and it's run in more than 50 countries been a very successful program and more recently Jean's created and developed a program called advocating for a new story for a shared humanity so basically that's exactly what where this today's workshop's been drawn from so I'm passing over to Jean um, to talk about and Help you if you're sitting here thinking, what are narratives? What are we talking about? Jean's about to tell you. So thank you very, very much, Jean. Oh, thank you, Shoshana. Let's see how we get on. And uh, hello, everyone. Really wonderful to share with you all this afternoon. So I'll try and give a little bit of an introduction, which I hope will clarify a bit what we're talking about. You know, as, uh, as individuals and as communities and as nations, we're all influenced by the stories we hear and tell ourselves and each other and pass on to next generations, future generations. Stories of historic events, current affairs, family fables, and community cultural conventions. 
these accumulate to become the local global narratives in which we share and from which we often suffer or can choose to use to transform lives and relationships. From this choice can grow narratives of peace. Now in today's workshop, you'll be invited in small breakout groups to reflect on specific personal and global narratives slash stories that have shaped you and your understandings about particular issues and to hear the interpretations and contexts of others, to discern underlying motives and attitudes, to replace judgment with curiosity. I love that phrase, which somebody introduced me to. Learning to replace judgment with curiosity. And then to explore together the possibility of creating new stories that can enable actions and collaborations for peace. The thing is that we, we each live out of multiple stories, each one a mixture of facts, fictions, and feelings. Some inherited, some learnt at school, some heard on social media, some from gossip, some we tell ourselves from childhood in order to give a sense of meaning to perhaps a traumatic experience or misunderstanding. And some of the stories we live out of evolve in the light of new facts or new feelings. Others stay stuck, providing us with a secure base of opinion from which to face the world. They can be threatened by the invitation to embrace fresh perspectives or consider the other's side of the story. We live with disputed details on just about everything. In our desire to simplify things, we sometimes miss nuances and the many layers of feelings and experience that every story contains. Being aware of our own filters and prejudices through which we view the world and one another is vital to this process. Honest self-awareness is a great clarifier. Here's a story from South Africa during the apartheid years. So Jin, as a lady, Jin's story is that her only daughter was killed in a targeted bombing of a popular cafe. Let Lapa is the name of the African militia leader who ordered the attack. Now, his story is one of revenge for the killing of innocent school children. Jin lived out of generational, a generational narrative of European entitlement, settlement in Africa with a benign intention. So to her, let Lapa was an evil terrorist responsible for the death of her daughter. Let Lapa lived out of a, a narrative of colonization and historic injustice. He saw himself as a freedom fighter. When they finally met, the demonic images that they had both projected on each other gave way to a new understanding of a shared humanity. Her offer of forgiveness for what had happened to her daughter and her recognition and contrition for the harm done by her ancestors opened for him a window through which for the first time he saw the possibility of hope and healing. They started to work together to model a new story of black and white in mutual respect and partnership and honesty. You know, the, the author C.S. Lewis once wrote, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. The, the words narrative and story are often used interchangeably. 
after researching many definitions, I've settled for stories as being concerned with particular events and narrative as a series of events woven together. The image of a river comes to mind, you know, the, the narrative like the river, a connecting thread flowing unevenly through time and place. The stories are the events that happen along the banks, impacting the river's flow. The creation narratives are full of stories of both the divine and the demonic. Our national narratives of conquests and defeats, of heroes and baddies, affect our relationships with other nations and with our own sense of identity. Mostly, we teach our children our historic pride and glory. Yet the shadow narratives that most countries keep hidden still play a subconscious role in how we see ourselves and each other, and usually remain untaught. Australia is a bit of a, a prime example. If Australia Day marks the start of a new nation for some, Botany Bay signaled the end of nations for others. The day and the bay, they epitomize the two dominant narratives that form so much of how Australia sees herself. Australia Day remembers the settlement of the country by heroic British settlers and ex-convicts, easing its conscience by declaring terra nullius, empty land, and classifying the Aboriginal people as part of the fauna and flora to be cleared for settlement and so-called civilization. Long before that, the Aboriginal narrative started, around 60,000 years ago, and colonization meant dispossession, destruction, and death. These two narratives have coexisted uncomfortably for over 200 years. Only now, I think, is truth-telling beginning to penetrate the pain, the silence, the denial. We're aware of discordant narratives around, with nations, within nations around the world, from, say, Israel and Palestine, to Ukraine and Russia, to Taiwan and China. Some of the most narr dominant global narratives are called ages by scientists, anthropologists, and philosophers. You know, there's the Ice Age, the Iron Age, the Age of Reason, Age of Entitlement, the Anthropocene, you know, to name a few. Some refer to recent centuries as the age of separation. As our mechanistic view of the universe has dismembered its various parts for analysis and research, overlooking in the process the essential interconnectedness of all life, animal, vegetable, mineral. Social cohesion, reverence for nature, and spiritual awareness have all fallen victim to this dominant narrative of separation. The restoration of relationship is the root of renewal. You know, we're, we're all characters in the stories that make up these narratives. We are the victims, the authors, and the tellers. As uh, Angelina Teng, a, a politician from South Sudan said, we, we must be careful not to sow the seeds of revenge in our children. This was particularly modeled for me by my British mother. So I'm British born, as Shoshana said. My parents were prisoners of war under the Japanese for over four years. Now, while not diminishing the hardships, my mother would tell me that she used the time to reflect on and learn from the wrongdoings 
of her own British people. So I inherited her abiding message of contrition, of forgiveness and love for the Japanese. You know, each of us is responsible for the stories we pass on, the learnings or the refusal to learn. Now, this is one clue as to how to change the global narrative from the current inevitability of violence and despair to one of compassion and hope. This is the work of peace, healing the hurts of history while we live and advocate for a new story for our time, a story of our shared humanity, a story of interbeing as Thich Nhat Hanh calls it. This will require a great deal of letting go of changing our negative perceptions and attitudes. When we talk about change, we're talking about inviting all experiences, light and shadow, into a healed whole. This change will need to start within each one of us. Addressing our own fears and resentments, it'll cost us our prejudices and egoism. It may require the giving and asking for forgiveness. These are all necessary keys for peace and freedom. As a conflict resolution guru, John Paul Lederach points out, every global concern has a disturbed relational epicenter. Say that again. Every global concern has a disturbed relational epicenter. Change relationships and you change the stories. Change the stories and you change the world. Authoring much longed for narratives for peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean, for that really helpful introduction to the theme for today. Um, I just want to explain that there is uh, there was a team of people who've put together today's session and the workshop. Um, it was initiated by Rita Worley, who's on the screen, and she's really keen that something came up in as part of Raising Peace. Jean, um, Sorry, Rita actually initiated the whole Raising Peace conference in the first place, and she's really keen for today, for this series, that we have something that's an active workshop. So that's what's coming up. So the rest of the, and right now, and I'll explain that in a moment, the rest of the team includes Jill Burrows from Pache Bene and Tanya Fox from Creators of Peace, and as Lindsay and Rita and myself, um, with some help from Brooke and some help from Jean. And um, so you'll be meeting Rita when you come back from the uh, breakout room. So I'm going to explain now what's going to happen in the breakout rooms and then Brooke will explain the mechanics of exactly how that's going to happen. Um, so firstly, uh, and yep, let me explain it and then I'll tell you a bit more. You're going to have one an hour and 35 minutes in these breakout rooms. So it's a really good... Uh, opportunity from some self-exploration. It's basically a time for you to explore the narratives that have shaped you, your personal ones as we've heard, the ones you've your global ones, ones you've heard as you came as you grew up in your home, your family, your friends, the groups you belong to, what you've heard in the media, um, all the things that have formed the, the narratives or stories that are sitting with you currently. It will be an opportunity and in four phases to actually think about what are your narratives, what comes up, then to reflect on the impact those narratives have had on you. And then a little bit of chance to move towards new narratives and think about what are the ones you'd want to see passed on, which ones and that it would be constructive for peace. So you'd be weeding out a little what's destructive and not helpful and what can be very constructive and then the fourth phase would be having a look at um, your role, 
what you, how you start talking about some of these or taking action to bring in these new narratives as part of um, raising peace in the future and in the present. So um, basically, we have um, offered four themes for you to choose if you want to. So if you've already done that or you want to, you can do that. We've did that to simplify things a little too, so to keep you on a focus if that's what you choose. Um, there is a fifth group which is called Other and there will be no particular theme for that group. So what would be important in that group is that that's the space where if you're not drawn to one of the other themes, you could go to that one and just focus on the narratives that um, are part of your life, the narratives for peace. And whatever they're, whatever they're about is fine. It, it doesn't have to be on a theme. It can be what's coming up for you and then you'll work on the, what's true for you. And that's true in all, all of the breakout rooms. You'll have there'll be four phases in the breakout room. Um, each each phase you'll have a chance to reflect and think about what um, what are your you know think through the questions that the facilitators will give you. The second part will be a little opportunity to share if you want to with the rest of the people in the group some of what you've reflected on. Um, the, then and the rest of the big role while you're in that breakout room will also to be to listen to what others have to say and learn from others um, and see what how that expands your thinking. Um, a very important point we want to make is that it, these breakout rooms are not about coming to some agreement at any time or nor will there be any reporting back to this big group about so it's not a group exercise it's actually in an opportunity for you to have your own experience and have your insights and have that happen in a group where you're hearing other people. So if there are different views in your group, that's fine. That's what we want to hear. That's part of our shared humanity, to hear our different experiences and views. So just wanted to make that kind of clear. As you can see, you will have a facilitator in your group. There are a number of people on the screen if you've been wondering what the F stood for and had some other possible thoughts. The real thing that F stands for is facilitators. So one of those people will be facilitating in the group with you. And they've been briefed and they've got some questions and they'll be guiding it through you, taking you through it. Um, there will be time in the middle of that group for a break. So I'm letting you know that there'll be opportunity to stretch while you're in the group and there will definitely be a break time. <laughs> So might be helpful when you're in the group to keep yourselves on mute if it's noisy and um, oh, there was something else I was going to say that I can't remember. Oh, and keep your face on the screen if possible. It's always nice in a group if that's possible. That was the other thing I wanted to say. Um, was there anything I've missed out? I think I've said everything. Would be helpful if once you're put in a group, which Brooke will do shortly and she'll explain that, if you note the number of your group in case you drop out so you can return back to that group. And I will be moving around from group to group. So I'll just let you know if I suddenly appear in your group, I'm just there for a little while. Just keep going with what you're doing. If there are any questions, I'm there to answer them and then I'll move off again. Okay. Just one, just one thing. Thank you, Rita. Rita's <laughs> definitely <laughs> been my other half with all of this going in. Uh, just that uh, this introductory session is being recorded oh. and the session at the end when we come back together will be recorded, but the breakout rooms will not be recorded. So that'll be completely confidential. Okay. And your facilitators will go through the guidelines and what we're doing all over again. Yeah. So if you didn't quite grasp at all, that's fine. And if you don't think you know yet what your narratives are or what all that's about, that's fine. You're probably not the only person. That's why you're here to have that experience. So that's also fine. So just come along with an open heart and an open mind and see what you get in terms of your own self-awareness and insights. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so Brooke, I can pass over to you and she's gonna explain how the groups will occur. And then if you've got any questions, you can ask. Let a, let's let Brooke explain it first. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for all coming here today. I'm a part of the tech team and it's been a very exciting journey so far. 
Uh, so yes, I'm about to open up the breakout rooms and we're doing a special kind of way of it today where you get to choose your own topic. So once I've opened up the rooms in just a moment, it'll come up with a list and you get to pick one. Uh, but just keep in mind that we are trying to keep the breakout rooms quite small. So if um, a certain number of people will go into one particular topic, I might have to move people around. So don't be offended. And if you would really like to swap and change, just send me a message for sure. And we can do something about that. Uh, otherwise, um, we should be all good to start. And um, I'll just pause the recording so that everyone knows. Okay. So when the breakout rooms are finished, you will, you'll see the, Brooke will put the timing so you can keep a track, but your facilitator also will. We'll be coming back to the main groups, but. So be careful what you say. It looks like everyone's back. It looks like everyone's back. Is there a breakout room that's not back? Mm, looks like you disappeared. Where's Rita? Oh, no, I think we're missing. Lindsay's not here. No, we're missing that group. You're right, there's four more. Mm. Here we go. Here they come. Here we go. So welcome back. I'm going to pass over to Rita, who's going to run this particular session. If, I, if that's okay, you're there, Rita. You're on mute too. Rita, we're waiting on you. Thank you. I, I couldn't unmute before. I Anyway, welcome back, everybody. And thank you very much for participating in the, in the breakout rooms. I hope you had some um, good sessions. Um, and I'd like now to ask you, I invite, so... Uh, Inviting you to share, there's no requirement to share, but we, it would be really nice to hear from some people about your personal, if you had any personal insights or what landed for you, things that really resonated with you and made you uh, think, reconsider or gave you some insight. <clears throat> so would anyone like to share? Please put your hand up. And Shoshana is going to help me by telling me who's got their hand up. So are there any hands up? Be careful if your hand's not up, I might name you. So Yes. And the other thing is you can also write something in the chat if you prefer to share that way. I just want to say I heard some wonderful discussions, so I'd really encourage you to um, share some of the insights that I heard. Uh, we've got some lovely, you've got Nigel there followed by Ben Zion and then Janine. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel, you're first up. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, we, I was in the Environment and Mother Earth group and uh, really appreciated everybody and what they shared. There was a fantastic flowing conversation. Um, but I think personally what I was taking away around environmental, I often feel quite overwhelmed and lost in the environmental space when I think about everything, all the systems I'm a part of and how much the economic neoliberal conversation dominates the way we think, the way we structure everything, the way everything is commodified. Um, so I was just touched by people sharing about uh, really quite amazing um personal experiences which changed the way they thought about the environment 
and then the way that they reconnected with it. And so coming away from today, it's that idea of connecting, again, connecting to country. So and having, uh, as one of the, our group said, having adventures in, in nature. And so, so I guess re-establishing that relationship and listening to nature. And the other thing that came up was as you engage in changing the story, of course, you're always going to come across people who you disagree with. And so we, we had a really good conversation around listening to the story of the people we disagree with. Like really, often that's in family relationships or in projects that we're working with people on. Um, and uh, Liz said this great phrase of like having a yarn. And I just like that expression of having a yarn with someone that I really disagree with rather than having a <laughs> an argument or whatever. Having a yarn really changes the dynamics in some way in my mind. So I was thinking about that, yeah. So thanks everyone. Thanks very much. I think you named Ben next, did you? Yeah, I did, thanks. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, look, uh, I was in the same group as Nigel. And I, I found it really useful listening to all the different positions and different experiences. Um, for me, the what keeps coming up at this time is the importance of the Indigenous voice um that was mentioned yesterday in the opening narrative um for this whole raising peace festival and i feel like there's so much to be learnt from that and that i've learnt so much from that and and i'm really excited that um i do dances universal peace and we're going down to uncle noel butler's land uh down a place called jamini ganya near aladala in a couple of weeks and it's the first time we've been there for several years and I just learned so much from his um, teaching. And he's an UN elder that's related to Uncle Max. And I mentioned that in social ecology where I used to teach, Uncle Max used to come off and, and give us teachings. And it was so profound to, to have these elders come and share. And I just feel like it's, it's time to really listen to that voice. And I'm just learning so much from it. Um, and what I realised was when I was asked what were the narratives I grew up with, it was all narratives of separation, you know, separate from nature, separate from other people, separate from the animal world. Everything was separated. And the idea of being scientific and objective meant I oh, was an objective observer of something. And I, the, the, the illusion that I could understand what that was by keeping myself separate. When in fact, as a social ecologist, I've learned that it's only through the experience that I actually learn what that's about. So I have to begin always to go to the experience. And, and this group was a great experience. So thank you for the whole way that this workshop's gone. I found it very useful. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ben. Um, now, who was the next person that was going to share? Janine. Janine? Hi. Um, yeah, I was in the religion and peace group with a uh, be few beautiful people. Um, and um, it was really interesting. We all come, came from very different places. Some of us with um, the ways in which religion inspired a sort of pacifist and nonviolent ideology. Some who, for whom religion um, or lack thereof religion. So not really adhering to a specific ideology. Um, and for some, it was, a, I guess, a, you know, histories of religious violence. Um, and so it was a really interesting, eclectic uh, group coming together and sharing. Um, and I think a real thing that hit home and a, a key takeaway was, um, I guess, bravery, bravery in the sense of engaging with groups of people that you may not um, naturally be drawn to or feel um, uh comfortable or at home with um, but recognizing that um, uh, there are such deeper narratives um, uh, to be engaged with and to learn from and to grow in your understanding in um, and also I think that this idea of um, 
of religious intolerance or or hatred um kind of we kind of talked about challenging the idea of yeah ensuring that um if your nation's history or your family history um is one where there is that type of conflict um making sure that um you know the ways in which you can not let it filter into your personal history and in how you engage and interact with people and, and individuals and ensuring that there is a distinction between those things and that your nation or your family history doesn't have to inform who how you interact uh, on, a, on a personal level with uh, with people um, so yeah it was a, a a great group and very happy to have met all of you Thank you very much, Janine. Wonderful. Um, and now, Gray, would you like to share? Yes, thank you very much. Um, we were in the International Security um, Group, and it so much relates to what we've just been hearing, particularly connections um, and, and engagements and relationships between um, people, nations, um, and, and and this is what is so missing in a lot of the um, uh, work. But it's um, a, lot, a lot of what we see around the world. Um, but the um, also it's the issue of in, uh, relating and engaging with people with countries that are very much different from Europe. Um, and uh, that's why United States sounds is, seems so very much attractive because we share so much of the culture and China is an enormous challenge. Um, but um, we, 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 uh, we need to get over the differences, the, the, the apparent differences in values and to be able to engage with the country in a respectful way. Um, to be able to understand how it's thinking, understand how it's, uh, it's acting, uh, and to be able to develop uh, productive uh, ways. And also it, the idea of peace be, seems to be such a passive concept. Um, and we need to engage with that in, in, in a productive, constructive way, so that peace is an active, a, 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 an active word. Um, uh, yeah, we talk, tend to resort to nonviolence. Well, that's non, <laughs> a non-word. <laughs> peace is a, is a real word, but it needs to put more life and, and vibrancy into it. Thank you very much. Um, and there's a sharing in the, um, Therese is shared in the chat, if, um, so feel free to read that as well. And um, I'd like to invite the next person to share. Who's going to put their hand up? That was Gray. I can't see any more hands up. Shoshana, um, do you want to nominate someone? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to nominate Emma. Good on you. Yeah, I was in the National Security yeah. Nationalism Group as well, and and certainly that final bit where we talked about how we were feeling, um, and for me, I often just feel so despairing and despondent um, about these very dominant narratives that kind of equate military might with security and you know they just seem so dominant how do we ever shift that or or, or change mm -hmm. that and and the thinking I guess what really it was good for me to be reminded about um the difference between what is in my control and what's not in my control and and the idea of kind of and this ties in with what Gray was saying that you know of of um not just opposing something but being for something and finding ways to live you know, to live peacefully, um, to live in the way that I'd like to see the narratives develop, you know, that non-violence is a viable alternative, that there are other ways that, that you know, that to sort of, yeah, <laughs> just to kind of work out, well, what can I do at my sort of small level? And that might be about having conversations with people, including my son who's in the army, um, and, you know, just, yeah, personalising it. 
so that I don't just get totally overwhelmed and despondent. Mm. Very interesting feedback. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Um, colonialism, anyone in that group want to share something? I can do that. Um, we had a, lot, a really interesting and wonderful discussion. Some of the things that I suppose um, that I can I took away from it was that it was interesting talking to um, English women who hadn't grown up here, and so the one we who grew up here were uh, created a, a different had a different experience of colonialism, obviously, from those who arrived as adults. And um, so one of the things that really struck me deeply was one of the women talked about um, how in relation to Aboriginal people, when we were growing up, there was just silence. And um, it was just, it was a really deep reminder of how, how ignorant <laughs> we, st we have been and, and so we talked a lot about um, uh, coming to a point of listening. No, some people don't know Aboriginal people still even. So it's not about getting maybe meet, meeting people. It's actually being mindful in your, your discussions with the people you're with about, um, about colonialism or First Nations rights or whatever. Um, and so, and the other thing was having a capacity for deep listening um, and and not only telling the story of the suffering but also all the fabulous wonderful things we can learn from being around uh, listening to Aboriginal culture so that's I don't know this we, we had such a deep discussion it's a bit hard to capture it really would, would someone else but I felt very enriched by the the um, honesty of everyone Thank you, Anne. That's really wonderful to hear. And so is there anyone else that was in that group that would like to share? Got two hands up. Jill was in that group and Elise has got her hand up as well. She was in a different group, if I recall. Okay. Jill. I was just going to say that uh, one of the... I mean, it was a great group and, and it was lovely to hear the different places that everybody was coming from. And um, everybody felt very supported and free to um, express where they were at and their narratives. Um, but one of the things to take away um, for me was the need to support the, st the statement from the heart, to read the Uluru statement, and to, it, it was a good opener for conversation at the moment and for listening to where people are at. Um, yeah, that'll do. Thank you, Jill. And Elise. So this sort of touches a little on what um, Jill says, really, that um, I think one of the things that we struggle with when you're trying to make change is you feel like you're not saying the right thing or that you're not presenting a compelling argument um, for why they should hold this particular view. And I just, I think one of the take home messages for me from this experience is that we were a bunch of people who got in a room and all we did was ask questions. And I think all of us will have left with slightly. Um, and so to take, to be aware of the power of asking questions in a non-judgmental space, um, in all of your interactions that you have with people. Wow. Thanks, Elise. A lot of, um, Similarities really in, in, in outcomes. And I'll just share if I may. <laughs> I was in the open group and somebody else from the open group might like to share as well. But um, we basically um, almost did have a theme and it was about the influence of our parents and the influence of their parents on our parents and the influence on us and how that's um, carried through into our lives and how we've responded and grown through that but also for me personally it was 
similar to um, some of the other things that have been shared about having the courage to engage in difficult conversations and respectfully uh, and openly. And I will remember that point there about asking questions. So, um, yes, thank you. And who would like to share next? I might hop in unless someone's urgently wanting to share so we can, we've got five minutes left and there's a couple of things to do to complete. Yeah. If that's okay, unless someone's busting, but what everybody, it's been wonderful to hear the things that you've been saying. Thank you so much. I really um, want to thank everybody for coming. It's a huge topic. Um, and I hope you've gone away with some um, expanded awareness of the topic and your role in it and what it's meant to you and other people's roles. I'm delighted that you've gone away with the questions and the need to have those conversations. Um, I'd like to encourage you to uh, pursue a little further the topic of narratives. There's a lot of sources of material around. Somebody already put a suggestion in the chat, book, chat box. Um, I'd also like to mention for you that we mentioned earlier the handbook that Jean and a team of people have prepared, which is called Ad Advocating uh, new advocates, for, what have I, I've lost it now, advocating for a new story for our shared humanity. Now it's, um, Tanya's going to put the link in the box. It's a free, it's available to you, for you to download freely. So you can look at it. What you can do with it if you want is get a group of people together and run this. It's a five session conversation. We call it an extended conversation. So a bit like you've had today, but are going a bit further and over a bit more time. So if you were motivated to do this with a group of people, you could simply do that. If you prefer to join a group, um, we offer some that start. And if you use the link that Tanya's, if you use the same link, you'll find a place where you could sign up for a group if you would like to do that. Um, I also run a course, which I wasn't going to mention, but someone's prompted me to, um, on engaging constructively in challenging conversations. If that's of interest to you, just mention it in the chat box. It's about how do you sit and have uh, conversations where there are differences and stay in that conversation with the differences. This is all part of our shared humanity and how, how we connect over these things. Um, If you don't find the link to the any of those courses, please just put your name in the chat and tell us what you're interested in. So I really want to acknowledge the team that put all this together. As we said before, we've got Lindsay and, and Rita and Jill and Tanya and myself. It's been a wonderful process working together. So I wanted to mention that and thank everybody. I also want to thank Brooke, who's so seamlessly got us into our groups and made what look like might be complicated into something quite simple. A special thank you to Jean for her wonderful introduction at the beginning. And um, we would, re and the last thing, and I thank you all obviously for coming and we would appreciate your feedback. And we have got a form, Tanya will have put the link to that in the chat box. Please don't be put off by it. It's a really long form, it's got one question. So it's really <laughs> don't, don't, all we like. There's no rating, no nothing. We're just simply asking the question to share with us uh, what your experience was. So it's an open form to just fill in. We value your feedback on that. And so, just one more, just one more point, if I may, Shoshana. Go ahead, of course. If anyone from any of the uh, groups or in the in the whole. Uh, session would would like to connect with other people please put your your email in the chat because um you know we we thought there might be some collaborative actions might come out of this and that would be absolutely fantastic so feel free to mm. put your name in the chat your email address and uh, we will share those with each other thank you so the con conversation needs to continue basically this is only a starter yeah um yeah so i really like to finish and repeat the quote that uh, jean already mentioned before from c.s lewis which is you can't go back and change the beginning but you can start where you are and change the ending 
So I'll leave you with that. If anyone's got any more comments or anything, please, please go. Otherwise, thank you very, very much for being with us and being thank on the journey. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good luck with your new narratives. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the team that put it together. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So, Brooke, will you save the chat? Uh, yes, I should be able to download it. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the down the chat will download straight It'll automatically. Yeah. Download, yeah. Thank you. And did I hope you recorded the last session? Oh, wonderful! Because there was some great feedback. Yeah, it was. It was excellent. Yeah. Job well done. Mm. <laughs> Well done, folks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Uh, Jean, are you still online? Yes. Can we have a moment with you before everybody? Uh... Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> yeah, or anybody else who'd like to stay, you're welcome. Yeah, just for a few minutes. Mm. Um, oh, I would just like to hear your feedback, Jean, because uh, which group were you in? And... Uh, well, actually, no, I wasn't. I wasn't in the group. Rita. Ah. So that made the listening to the feedback all the more interesting. Yes. Um, I, I heard from the feedback a wonderful amount of listening. What a great, what a great thing. Yes. And uh, yeah, and just the importance, I was reminded of the importance of getting underneath the stories. You know, what's underneath? It's so, um, there's always a story underneath the story. Feelings, strong feelings, experience or hurt or opinion, whatever it is. And how often we just take the surface level. And but anyway, I got a sense of people going deep, which is wonderful. Mm. And uh, yeah, I wanted to say to Gray, but I, I didn't. That yeah, peace has to be active. Peace is never passive. It's a total uh, misunderstanding of what peace is all about. Because mm. it's about meeting all the needs all the needs of not just the human family but the earth itself and that pursuit of justice and meeting the needs yeah so yeah it's, it's very very happy with thank you so much for setting it up mm. thank you jane for your inspiration mm. <laughs> any um feedback from shoshana who i noticed was popping around the around yeah no it was lovely to listen in on all the groups i have to say there was some um, all they were all rich conversations it didn't feel like people were off track or anything it felt very rich actually mm, great. Mm. who were some of the others david Lindsay. <clears throat> I thought the sharing at the end was lovely, though. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Well done, everybody. Well done, David. You had a lovely group. You were doing <laughs> very nicely with them yeah. there, weren't you? Still got one of my group with me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, and thanks to all the facilitators, those that are left. Yeah. Mm. Did I thank the facilitators? <clears throat> oh, maybe I did. Oh, we can send them an email. <laughs> yeah, I forget that one. Oh. You, did, you did a great job getting all those facilitators together. That was terrific. I'm going to be uncomfortable all night. I've got it on my list, facilitators. We lost, <clears throat> we lost one person right at the beginning of the breakout, the first breakout, who uh, felt that she didn't uh, want to share, and so she left, which was a bit sad. Did, did she share that with you or did you just make that assumption? No, no, she shared that. Yeah. Oh, that who was in your yeah, house, was I it? believe so anyway. I was, yeah. That's interesting though. We lost one from our group. I don't know if that's the same one. She said she had someone at the door. Oh. And uh, just an un, un, you know, not, an, a not expected guest. Right. Who, who did you lose from your group? That uh, she had an unusual name, so sort of Jewish name. I, I oh, did, I know it was. Yep. You know who it was? That was another. Started with an I. Yeah, Is, yeah. It was an. It was a Jewish name. And, this and we lost another one who had another meeting to go to. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no. 
<laughs> oh, all in all, I thought it went ran very smoothly. You know, mm. you did really yeah. well. Yeah. Thanks for. Yeah. Well, we kept to time basically, didn't we? We got yeah. through it all, and all the groups seemed to get through the. Mm. the yeah. Very nicely. Um, You're uh, on mute, Lindsay. I can unmute him. No, I can't. Yes, I can only ask him to. Lindsay, you're on mute. <laughs> we missed all of those pearls of wisdom. I was mostly just thanking Jean for the amazing work that she's done to put the program together. And mm -hmm. uh, I was I was just so impressed with it when I read it. And uh, yeah, looking forward to further interaction. So if anything's happening, Shoshana, let me know if there's one of those groups going. Well, what you could do is hop on the website and put your name in there. Okay. Because they, um, you know they're organised through there. There's a. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that okay. maybe maybe one in November. Um, yeah. Just working on it, mm. or just start your own. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, it was a very successful experiment, Shoshana. You were concerned all along that we wouldn't have enough time. And I think, I, think I guess was... somebody said that people come because they're interested to do this. And so they, they immediately got on with the job, if you know what I mean. And, and certainly our group, it, it just worked really well, went through the, mm. the questions, the, the ones you'd chosen. It worked really well indeed, so full marks. <laughs> well, I think I must just say.